Okay, this is the lab we are going to do today. Seed 2.0 buffer overflow vulnerability uh, lab. When you right click, open it here, the buffer overflow attack lab server version. Currently, it has uh, two versions one is the local version, the other one is the server version. And uh, this Wednesday, we will do the local version together. Today, we do this uh, server version. Here is the manual, uh, follow the lab manual step by step. And this is a lab setup. If you have any question about the Docker, check the Docker manual as before. And save link as. Okay, save the lab setup.zip. Here is the lab manual. What we are going to do uh, today. Uh, read it by yourself uh, carefully. First, we need to set up the lab environment using this uh, lab setup zip we just downloaded. Uh, please make sure you need to turn off the kind of measures, otherwise you will not able to do the lab. So we open a terminal window. Go to the place, I think. Uh, what? Right, lab set up is here. Yeah, unzip the lab set up. All the files are extracted into this lab set up folder. You may check here. We have attack code, you have containers, server code, shell code, and a docker composer, docker ML. Now please remember the first step is uh, usually uh, students make mistake, they forgot this step, they will not uh, complete the lab. Sys control write a parameter into the kernel randomize you know, zero disable uh, the address randomization for both the stack and the heap. You may double check without this uh, dash w. See it equals zero. The one uh, program is provided as a step to C, so we can go over and have a look. It runs on the server. That is a self to C step to C. We open all these uh, files, in the text editor. Okay, here is the stack.c, the vulnerable, pro vulnerable program. The buffer size, I just chose the default value, you may choose some other values. Here in this program, the BOF, this function, it has a buffer overflow vulnerability. Here you can see a we have 64 bit and a 32 bit. The problem happened here. It tried to copy a big string into this small buffer. The buffer size is set up here. Uh, parameter here, buffer size, it can be uh, set in the make file. And uh, when we 
communicate with this program, it will show its uh, EBP location and uh, the buffer address, so we don't need a GDB to debug this one because all the information are provided. And we will do a local version, use GDB this uh, Wednesday. This server.c is set up a TCP server to accept client connection to this uh, stack. This make file, here you see uh, we, we have three uh, tasks with the difficulty level from L1 to L4 and it be becomes more and more difficult. So it will compare it into four uh, programs by set different uh, buffer size. Here is the comparison how to compare it. Buffer size is set up here. Uh, these are one uh, program and the server program. Let me read uh, this explanation by itself. In this program, the bed file is 517 bytes. You can always use a hex editor to check the contents of the bed file. First, we need to uh, compile the one of the program, all the instructions are provided in that uh, make file, so we only need to run this uh, make uh, make install. We already went through the make file, you saw this line over there, right? And 32 bits, by default, is compared into 64 bits. So you only need to run make and make install. And you can see a uh, make install actually it just copy the compiled program into this BLF container folder. Here open a new tab, this uh left side up. You check the BLF containers currently uh, it's only one doc file over there. Now let's compile this one. Here, make sure you are inside that folder. CD to left side up, CD to that server code. Now we tell make. Okay. You see a uh, file programs are generated. Make install is just a copy. Right? It'll copy the server and stack to that BLF. Folder. Now you check that BLF folder. You see uh, file programs are copied over there. Certainly you can check with this GUI. Right? Here inside this GUI, you see a uh, server stack 1, 2, 3, 4, they are copied here. Here it ask uh, the instructor to choose a value, I just use the default value. Because the server will change uh, those address uh, with a little bit of randomness. And this program, uh, this lab, it set up a container. The one the program run on the container, we usually uh, consider the container as a server. Consider in the real world you want to attack a server. Now we need to communicate with that server. So this is a simulation of the real world situation. You are familiar with these commands in our previous labs. Build container, bring up. After your lab, remember to bring it down, shut down the containers. Here on the alias. And when you interact with a container, finance ID, then use a doc sh followed by the ID to open a hash 
open a patch interface into that uh, container. So you need to uh, run it in this folder in the lab setup. Just on the lab setup. DC build. Four containers are built. DC up. So one, two, three, four, corresponding to level one, two, three, four, correspondingly. I leave it here. Open a new terminal. Open a new tab. If you want to interact with uh, one of them, for example, the first one, we need. Uh, Talk PS to find their ID numbers. Right, here is the ID of server one, is this one. Here pay attention yours may be different. Use yours. Talk uh, share followed by this one. Copy and paste here. Certainly you you only need to type two for the two characters since the first two characters they're all different. Now I'm inside the container one, server one. Again, open another terminal window, uh, a new tab. We will use it later. So what we set up the environment now. We have four containers running. Task one, get familiar with the shell code. The shell code is simply to uh, run a shell. We have a 32 bit version and one another 64 bit version. And you may uh, read the code by yourself. It's the main uh, run bash, then execute any, uh, any commands. You may run multiple commands by modifier. This is line 3. Those code are inside the shell code. Here, again, open your new. Share code. Do the share code. Can open it. That is a program. It will read two code files: one sixty-four bit, one thirty-two bit. Then run it directly. Run the code. Here to define a function pointer, point to those uh, code, then run it. So if you are familiar with the C program language, you will feel very familiar with these things. It's not required. So now for those uh, code file. Here, share code 32 bit. There are binary uh, numbers. And we will learn this uh, batch code next week. This is a share code next week. How to construct a share code. Actually, uh, it's quite a challenge. You need to understand uh, assembly language. This is a 32 bit. Here you can change the command to run yours and uh, pay attention to this uh, explanation. You need to make a line your command to this mock because it's a hard coded in this uh, shell code. When we run this uh, Python program, it will generate the code file, say to bit. Run this one. They generate a 64 bit code file. So okay, now let's uh, just leave it as default.
here cd into that uh, shell code we are compile this uh, core shell code first here you check the right manual generate the shell code binary first then compile the core shell code C, then uh, run it to have a look You may modify the shell code. For example, you can use that to delete a file. It's okay. You don't uh, compile the core shell code first. It's just compiled two version: one thirty-two bit version, the other sixty-four bit version. You may run this way Python 3 shell code C2 because it's executable, you can run it directly. Currently, you didn't see a two code file, right? Once you run this one, c 2 bit, we will see a c 2 bit code file is generated here. Or you run another way, like this. So that a 64 bit code file is generated here. This for bit we can check uh, their sizes one hundred thirty six bytes this is one hundred sixty five bytes we can ch check its contents with any hex editor for example plus cut file say to Surprise those arrows. Run in background. And uh, here it uh, what it looks like. This is the code file was said to be shell code. And you can see that command line is here. Right? Well, this code that will be loaded into the stack and run it by that core shadow C. So we run it locally to have a look. Run this a 2 and a 64out a 2out What do we see? We see a ls command list out the files in the current folder. Then see a output hello c 2 then see to uh, user information. You can check that hash code. Check the uh, shell code here. The first one list out the files and folders under the current folder. Save to bit. Save to, to bit it uh, echo hello say to. Then output the last two lines. This is the password file. If you run that 64 bit, we have similar output except this one. Right? Hello, 64. A 64 dot out. And you see the contents similar. You are asked to uh, change these things. For example, uh, create one file. It's a good idea to leave it here, just comment out and create another one. Make sure align vertically. For example, we just uh, echo create a file. And you use bin touch create a virus file and the temp folder. When you just save it, this is a set to bit. 
you see the color is not right, right? Because I okay, I don't think any typo is here. Usually, uh, you need to pay attention. The pair of these uh, quotes: single quote, double quote. Now, on this search to read, we run that uh, ac two. First, uh, you check that the temp folder you don't have a wireless file. Uh, I didn't see a wireless file under this uh, temp folder. Now, run that a three two dot out. So I still have these things because I didn't uh, generate that uh, code file. So after you modified your Python program, we need to run it again to generate the code file, the updated code file. Because currently it still uses that old uh, code file. Okay, now I generate an updated code file and I run that ac 2 again. You will see uh, this output. I create a virus file and create a virus file you check that uh, temp folder you see that virus file is there for this uh, 64 bit you may delete that uh, virus file just created echo This is a way how to delete it, right? Cause it's remove command. Make sure the quote pairs. Control S, save it. Generate a new code file. Save it for Py. Then run that a sig dot out. Delete the virus file. You can check the temp folder. You see that the virus file is gone. So this we run uh, locally. Now we are going to attack the server. Here in this report, please. Uh, Include a modified shell code in the lab report as well as your screenshots. Attack, attack the server one. You can check this IP address 10.9.0.5. Right, point file is uh, server one. Point six is server two. We can uh, send a message to that server. Is it running inside the container? And its port number is ninety ninety. We open a new uh, terminal tab. Go back to the lab setup. Now we switch to the attack code folder. Here we have a exploit.py and a bootforce.sh. And today we only use this uh, exploit.py. And this Wednesday we use this one, bootforce.sh. First, we want to get the information from the server. You will send a message to the server, we will get the frame pointer and the buffer address. Because we cannot debug program on the server in the real world, typically. Right? So if we can get this information, it will be very valuable. However, in the real world, we have, have nothing. 
And uh, last week, I demonstrated how to find the EBP and the buffer address. And this uh, Wednesday, we will do it again. Right now, let's uh, send uh, any message to the server. Just use echo, hello, pipeline to uh, TCP connection, use NC 10.9.0.5. Port number 9090. Ctrl C, stop it. The output is uh, here. You run these uh, containers. Right? You see is output from this uh, server one. You see the frame pointer and this uh, buffer address. You may try it again. Yeah, bring up, press enter, control C, stop it, go back. Right, you see another output and this address they are identical. Yeah, this one equals this one, this one equals this one. Which means that uh, address randomization is turned off. If you see different values, which means you forgot the step one to turn off the address random. So please remember to uh, turn off the address randomization so you will have a fixed address for these variables. Now we can send uh, the bad file through the TCP connection, uh, 517 bytes of the data file from the user. Here in the attack, right? currently we don't have bad file. We can uh, create an empty bad file. Then send this uh, bad file through the TCP connection. As it says, if the server program returns, it will print out the return properly. However, if this message is not uh, print out, the step program has uh, probably crashed, and the server will still uh, keep running and uh, taking new connections. Now, where could we see this uh, return properly? We run it, press enter, we see nothing, right? Go back to here, you still see it. didn't see anything from here. Now we control C, close this one. You see another output like this. We didn't see uh, a so return uh, properly here. These others are re returned properly. No matter we send the message from our file or just from this echo. If it's uh, not overflow the buffer, we, we get this uh, returned properly. This returned properly because the buffer, buffer overflow didn't happen. Now, with this information, that are uh, RBP and buffer address. We can construct the attack, and uh, for sixty-four bit, pay attention that is called RBP. For thirty-two bit, is called EBP. Now, write the exploit code and launch the attack. Here, the exploit.py. We need to modify this file and generate the bad file. Then we send the bad file through the TCP connection. First one, we just send the commands we have before. The second uh, one, we, we want to create a reverse shell as we did before. Right? We did it in, in our shell shock lab. We create a reverse shell. In this buffer overflow, we also want to create a reverse shell so we can run any command on, on the victim machine. Now, 
Now let's uh, construct that. Uh, here, let's open a new tab. The attack code here, the attack code exploit.py. This is exploit.py, and as I put the shell code here. Then we fill uh, the content with all knobs 90, 517 uh, bytes. So the shell code we copied from that shell32.py. Task 1 and task 2 uh, set to bit. Task here, those tasks, uh, task 2 and uh, 3, or level 1 and level 2, they are set to bit. Task 4 and 5, or level 3 and 4, they are 64 bit. So we copy this code, shell code. Now see, come to the exploit here, the shell code. Can we put it here? Can we save it? Alright, this is the shell code. And we can modify the command here to run the command we want. But however, the command is hot coded into the shell code into the code file <coughs> that's why we want to create a reverse shell later let's do this one first to, uh, to create a virus file on the server since we wanted to open a shell for that server right here so we can check it's a temp folder there is nothing over there because we didn't launch this attack yet. Now I'll put the shell code somewhere in the payload. So where do we uh, put it? First one change the Shell code, we want to date. Second one, change this start. Third one, change this to the return address and the offset. Then we generate a code file and launch the attack. Here we can refer to our slides. And luckily, that slide is not updated. And also, the textbook is not updated. But the idea, they are still uh, identical. So, for the first one, when we check this output, here the EBP, and copy it. Here we get the information from the server. EBP and the buffer address. Yours may be different. So the return address we know is uh, EBP uh, minus. That buffer plus four for uh, zero to bit, right? Now, what's this number? The defer only the last three uh, digit. So we can uh, open a new term and use Python to do the calculation, or you use any uh, calculator. It's up to you. I would like to open a new tab here in uh, um, Python three. Then do the calculation. I only need to type the last three digits, but make sure it's a hex number. 
four B eight minus zero X four four eight. Is a one one two. Now the shell code we put it at the end because we we know the buffer is large enough for the silver one. When you check the manual, we are reading it carefully. We put the shell code at the end of this uh, this bad file file total is 517 bytes how do we put it at the end? 517 we minus its length the share code the length of the share code right so this way we can put here start from this start to the start plus this length if you know uh, Python code is uh, okay to delete this delete this code I leave it here if you delete it means copy those content from this start to its end that will be more readable now we need to change the return address change it to be this one here now this offset change it to that pass for and this return address we can change it to a EBP plus some uh, number to compensate When we run the locally with the GDB, we need to compensate some information instead by uh, by GDB, right? Here we just try some number. The return address, EBP plus some number, for example, plus ten. So you may change this ten to some other numbers. If it does not work, you will change it to some other numbers to have a try. For example, you change, uh, change from the file 10, 20. As a side work, you may find the minimal number and the maximum number that worked by yourself. Here, let's just try a ton to have a look first. Now, this uh, offset. So it would be one one two plus four, right? You want to know that information. One one two plus four is one one six. So this offset you put in the buffer in the bad file. After we generate it. We can use a hex editor to check the contents. Can I save it? Now let's uh, go back in this attack coder. So we run that exploit.py to generate a bad file. Currently, our bad file is at zero bytes. Use the LIS to see its uh, length is zero. Now we generate a new bad file. Check the length again. It's 517 bytes. You may use BLAST, any other hex editor to check the contents. Here, the whole buffer file is fixed with a 90, the knob command, right? And at the end, the shell code is copied here at the end. 
Yeah, and that return address is here. In that offset, you can check this offset C1. Is uh, offset 0x74 uh, is a hex number. You may convert it to a decimal number to see what it is. 0x74. Is one one six. This uh, what we generated. Now check this number. It looks like not uh, like the number we typed here. Your number f f f f d four b a plus ten. So what's that? Again, we can uh, find the result. Place here and convert it to a hex number. So we get FFFFD4C2. Now check the order C2, D4, FF, FF. So the, word, the order is reversed because the Intel CPU is a little angular machine, as we discussed during the lecture. So it will be stored uh, reversely. Okay, now let's uh, launch the attack. The attack. What's the command we did in the attack? Here it uh, create a virus file. Right? Now let's uh, launch the attack. Use this command. We send the payload through the TCP connection to the server or the container. But under now, we need to go to the container here. There's a container. Check the temp folder to have a look. You can see virus is created, so which means the attack worker. In your case, if it does not work, I change some other numbers here. This one to some other numbers, or 20, 30, uh, or some others. You also need to pay attention your EVP or buffer may be different. Also need to uh, change accordingly. Now we want to uh, create a reverse shell by modifying this command. How do we create a reverse shell? Check the nav menu here. Now we uh, that one before. First, uh, run a server on our local machine. Again, it's okay. We use 1990 because it's run on our local machine. This command. So let's copy the command. Go to our uh, exploit.py. Comment out that line. Control we paste here. I forgot um, forward slash. Now the address is our local machine. So yours may be different. Here I need IP ADR run locally. Here your local machine. As we did in the shell shock attack, right? So my IP address this is uh, mp 0 s 3 this is mine so please uh, change it to yours otherwise it will not work Can we can we save it use empty space make the uh, align vertically this this one align vertically, this part align vertically. 
Okay, it's saved. Now we can run that attack again. Before we run that attack, we need to uh, run a local server, right? Open a new tab. Here is still under this code attack. NC L ninety ninety. Press enter. Or you may use the command line as the show in the in the lab manual. It uses uh, N NV L. Here. Or you just use a uh, dash L for simplicity. Press enter. Now it's listening on that uh, port number. In the attack here, we bring up that attack file. Wait a minute, we didn't uh, generate the code file yet, the bad file yet, right? Here we just modified that uh, Python file. So this is a mistake easy to make. We forgot to generate the bad file after we modified that exploit.py. So uh, please remember this. Generate bad file, a new bad file. Since we modified that command, then we send this bad file to the container. OK, go to that uh, listener, our log server. You see a connection received from that uh, server one and we get a reverse share right see it currently i'm inside the server one we can type ip or type uh, if configure or you use ip editor it's up to you you can see uh there's a server one ip address which means uh reverse share is created on my local machine and I can uh, type this command to the remote server to control the remote server and uh, since it uh, is root so I can't do anything on that server the server is uh, completely compromised uh, this is uh, task 1 uh, task 2 level 1 attack this is level 1 attack go back to level 1 attack so this level 1 attack is done now for level 2 attack level 2 attack we only have the information uh, that uh, Buffer address, we don't have that EBP, so we don't know the size of the buffer. In this case, how could we uh, construct the payload, just one payload, to exploit the buffer overflow? Please read this uh, text carefully by yourself. If you do a brute force attack, it's very really easy for the victim to find some abnormal behaviors and fight back. So we want to construct uh, one payload and uh, compromise the server with a single attack. So this is the job we want to do. And we have only one information, the address for the buff buffer. So now let's uh, execute, uh, uh, exit the reverse share. We will prepare for the second task. Right? Here the Python lived here. This uh, folder we send the bad file lived here. This is the local folder lived here. Here is the uh, server one exited. Now you may uh, go into a server two here. The server two with uh, doc sh that is server 2 you may only use 1b right? use 1b and enter here it says because I make a typo 
docker okay now we are inside a server to 1bb fdd here 1bb 1 1BB fdd this server tool. we open a shell just check uh, any uh, actions we or any attacks we did to see the effect or the result here is still the server one because we didn't send any information to server two yet now let's send the information to server two again we may send the echo hello to server two I use the same command here echo hello pipeline to that is the connection dot nine dot zero dot no this time is a six six is a server two and a level two task again the port number is ninety ninety press enter is blocked here as we did before control C now go back here now you see the this orange color here right we see this uh, server tool we have only a BOF and it returned properly power overflow not uh, happened so we need this information to construct the exploit program now for that exploit program here is the exploit we want to uh, make it clear so close this exploit.py rename it as exploit1 ctrl c ctrl v rename it as exploit2 open in the text editor we modify here this is for the task 3 level 2 attack again this time we don't have this EBP we only have this uh, buffer Oops. And copy that buffer address. Copy. Yours may be different, so please. Uh, oops. Right. It's not copied. Okay. Save it here. Now we don't uh, know the buffer size because we don't have ETP, EBP, right? Buffer size unknown without EBP. Now what could we do? Again, we put the shell code at its end, and we have some information. This buffer is uh, large enough to hold our stuff. Buffer size is in this range. So in this range, it may not be able to hold our shell code, right? Our shell code. What's the size of our shell code? As we checked before. Here's share code. Not just the code file. For set to bit is one hundred and thirty six 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 four bit is one hundred and sixty five. But here it says so it may not be able to uh, hold our shell code but when you read this one it says uh, we want to uh, 
Allowed to control one payload of the box for any buff size within this range. Again, we put this uh, shell code at the end of this bad file. Bad file is 517 uh, bytes. It will overflow that buffer. That the buffer is just one, 100 to uh, 300. Absolutely, will be overflowed by this 517 uh, bytes. Now, here we have only that. Uh, Buffer address. So now for this buff, buffer address put here. What number we need to put here and what offset? We don't know it, the offset. So in this case, we would like to uh, put the return address close to that shell code. And this offset, we can uh, put the return address in the beginning part of that bad file, which means we spray the return address to all those uh, beginning part. For example, the first 200 uh, bytes or 220 bytes. Uh, but we need to make sure it's divisible by by four, four for a zero bit address, right? So this is offset to uh, put this address, this return address, is four bytes into the beginning portion of that bad file. So we need a loop. For example, if we want to put the return address in the first, for example, 250, let's say 240 bytes of the battle file, how do we do that? We can use a for loop for I in range. 240 it equals uh, 60 times 4 so we would like in a range uh, 60 so this offset let's say offset equals i times 4 so when i equals 0, offset equals 0, when i equals 1, offset equals uh, 4, and so on. Through this way, the return address will be uh, written into the first uh, 240 bytes of the battle file with uh, totally 60 of these uh, return address. We can check the battle file when it's generated. Can I save it? Now let's uh, generate the bad file. The bad file is uh, generated in the attack right here. Now we run exploit 1 or exploit 2 to generate the bad file. Exploit 2.py. Now the bad file is generated. Check the bad file with the blast. So you will understand the code. Here you see at the end we have the shell code. Now for other part you see is 90, 90, 90, 90, does not matter. Now you see the return address is repeated every four bytes. Right? Every four bytes is repeated. This is what we need. But again, pay attention the water 
is reversed. Here you check this one. Control C. In the Python, we calculate the hex value. It's FF, FF, D524. Reverse the order, it will be 24 D5 FF FF. So please pay attention is byte reverse byte reverse, not a digit reverse. Each two digits is one byte. So totally we have four bytes. And the order of these four bytes they are reversed. So it's 24 D5 FF FF. Now the return address is this one. We hope with this uh, address when we run the attack the program will fall into this part right? we, we pass 300 here is 240 which means we put we put the return address, those return address hope it uh, will fall in this range if uh, it uh, succeeded uh, in this uh, range 90-90-90 for example if it is uh, supposed it is here then it will run this uh, no no operation, no operation finally it will come to the shell code and execute the shell code right. and we have this uh, return address put here we hope it uh, can fall into this uh, place because we pass 300 offset into the buffer this is a buffer start address Right now let's uh, generate the bad file. We want to generate it. We want to generate it. We close it. Oh, this close. That's not work. Here it says uh, you can ignore. Now, before we launch the attack, the code, what we did in this code? We create a reverse shell. So you may uh, try create a virus file first, then do this uh, reverse shell. I think uh, we can do it together quickly. Just comment out. In this case, we need to generate it again. Exploit two dot pi. Okay, it's generated. Now we launch the attack and check whether you create a virus file in this uh, container tool. Uh, container tool will open a shell here. Now we send the uh, bad file with the command. Here, pay attention. Change the IP address to the server tool. Is dot six not dot five? Dot five is uh, server one. Press enter. Now go to the server. You check that uh, temp folder. Uh, you find a virus file over there. The virus file is created, but I I didn't uh, check that before. I attack it. So. You may uh, check the uh, once you open a shell, log in into this server, you te check this temp folder, you will not see a virus file before you launch the attack. 
Okay, now I want to uh, create a reverse shell. So go to the exploit2.py. Comment out this line and uh, uncomment the other. This one for the reverse shell to make it more readable, just like this. Oops, this is an uh, echo set to not this line. The reverse shell is this line, right? Line 19. 19, this line. Save it and uh, generate the pad file first. Deploy to the pipe. Okay, the pad file is generated. You can always check the pad file where it's generated or not. For example, we just uh, update the command, so you can use plus to check its contents. Pad file. You check the shell code here, right? You see it is updated. So that's it. Yes, it looks good. Now we have this uh, payload on this uh, again on this uh, lo local. We want to run run a listener first. NC dash L. 1990. Again, you, you may want to use a uh, NV to see some output, otherwise, you, you see nothing. Okay, we're listening on our local machine on port number 9090. If you don't use a 9090, use some other number, it should be identical to this one. You change it here. Okay, now on the attack, we send the payload. Use that cat, send it to uh, the server tool. Press enter. It uh, blocked here. Go to that listener. Let me see a connection from the 0.6 to our local listener. So we create a reverse shell to that. Uh, server two. Again you can verify this IP address with IP HDR. This command is run on that server two. So here you see the IP address 10.9.0.6 so it is uh, run, running on the server two. So we created uh, task two and task three. These are all the tasks uh, we need to complete the lab. So clean up the lab. Exit and uh, Ctrl D here Ctrl D to exit Ctrl D Ctrl D Ctrl D Ctrl D Ctrl D Now how do we stop all these containers? You may type Ctrl C Ctrl C yeah, you type Ctrl C, it does not work. In this case, how do we close it? Open new tab. We use DC down. Right? Your DC down must run under this uh, lab setup folder, which means run inside the folder contains the doc dash compose doc by area. DC down. It will shut down them. Uh, Elegantly. So wait a minute. When we are waiting, we can close the other files. Here you see, remote done. Now you can run again. Otherwise, you will run into trouble. If you run into trouble, follow this manual, Docker manual on the Cedar Security Labs to solve that problem.